Welcome to this program on isotopes. Let's move this little pun out of the way and uh, take a look at what they are. <clears throat> isotopes are atoms of the same element with differing numbers of neutrons. So here I have an example down below. Here I have two atoms of chlorine and both of them have exactly as they should the same number of protons. So in this case I can identify that this has 17 protons and so does this particular atom. There's no indication of any charge up here, so I can make an assumption then that there are 17 electrons in this one and also 17 electrons in this one. Now, being that they have the same number of protons and the same number of electrons, these two species are going to have exactly the same chemical properties. Having the same chemical properties means that they will react the same way. However, what is different about them is their number of neutrons. Again, there's 35 particles in the nucleus, 17 of which are my protons. If I subtract those two from each other, I arrive with the fact that this one must have 18 neutrons in it with no charge, and this one has 20 neutrons in it with no charge. This slight difference is going to cause these to have different masses and as a result you're going to have substances that have different physical properties. So if I was to consider a, a property, let's say density, I would expect this to be a denser material because there's more mass present in the nucleus. If I was to look at how fast they diffuse or spread out, a gas container in this chlorine is lighter and it will probably diffuse or spread out faster. So, slight differences in their physical properties which arise from the differing numbers of neutrons. Now, if one goes out into nature and takes a look at how abundant these two isotopes are, so we'll do that in this next portion, we find out that 22% of the time, chlorine is of this variety, this chlorine. And about 77% of the time, chlorines exist in this variety. I'm asking you here to determine something called the relative atomic mass. Now, a little bit about what? what that means. First of all, we use the word relative to indicate that it's compared to something. So when I say the relative mass here, it's relative or compared to the most common isotope of carbon, which we say has a mass of 12. It's also not a simple average, it's a weighted average. And here's how one calculates a weighted average. To arrive then at the relative atomic mass, I need to take some consideration about how often a particular isotope appears. That makes it a weighted average. So in this particular case, here's how I go about that. 22% of the time I change that into a fraction or a decimal, so 0.2272 and I'm going to multiply it by what that one weighs, which is chlorine 37. That's its mass number. And then I'm going to add to it the other 77% of the time. That it has a mass of 35. And multiplying that out um, to two decimal places in my answer, gives me an answer of 35.45. Now, that is what we call a weighted average mass. There is no chlorine that weighs 35.45. Chlorines will either weigh 37 or 35. This is just an indication of their average mass. When you look at a periodic table, that's typically the number that you see. So when I look here at chlorine underneath here, and I see 35.45,
that's telling me the average weighted average mass of chlorine atoms. Let's work this one backwards a bit. This next question is going to deal with the substance neon. And neon has underneath it a relative atomic mass of 20.18. What I want to do is determine the abundance of the isotopes that make up neon. So, naturally occurring neon comes in two varieties, one with 10 neutrons, the other with 12 neutrons. So let's take a look at what that means. The element neon has 10 protons in it. If it also has 10 neutrons, that means I would have some neon of this variety, and I would also have some neon atoms with 10 protons and 12 neutrons that would be of this variety. What I'm being told here is the relative atomic mass is 20.18. So 20.18 must equal, well, let's say that x is the fraction that exists in this variety. So I would have x times 20. And the fraction that exists in this variety I'll call y. And so I'll have y times 22. Now at first glance this might look unsubtle because we don't know either x or y, but we do know that if we add these two fractions together, they must equal 1. That allows me to do some substitution. So I can replace y with 1 minus x. So I'm going to take this quantity and put it up in there. So 20.18 is going to equal 20 times x plus now I have 1 minus x times 22. We'll now take that and multiply it by both sides, so we'll take this term and expand it. So I now have 20x plus 22 minus 22x. Collecting my x terms on this side, I'll have minus 2x. And taking the 22 over to the other side and subtracting it from the 20.18 gives me minus 1.8. 82. Solving then for x, I get 0.91. That tells me then that 91% of the time neon comes in this variety and the remaining 9% of the time it comes in this variety. And that's not too surprising that as this number is fairly close to 20, which is the most prevalent form of neon. In our next program, we're going to take a more close look at how the electrons are arranged inside of an atom. Thanks for watching.